Welcome into Scurry in the Scrub, episode nine here. We have a special guest today, uh, point guard of the Creighton men's basketball team. And I guess, what are we going to say, NCAA player of the week? Is that yep. what we're going to go with? That's, yeah. the, that's the hype we're going to give it today. The current title. Uh, Marcus Zagorowski, my dog, my bro. Thanks for joining us today, man. How are you? I'm good, man. My pleasure, though. You real. Good. Yeah, I'm chilling. Yeah. Chillin'. yeah, like first of all, how back how how far back do uh Scurry and the and Zagorowski go? Like how when did you guys first like Ooh, how long how long has this been going on here? I've known Scurry since he was like sophomore junior or when he was at um what's the what's the what, what prep you will do again? Where at St. Mark's. Yeah, St. Mark's. I've known yeah, we, I mean we played right, on the right, same yeah. AU program. Yeah. yeah. We yeah. were roommates actually no. a few a few times. Really? Like we were roommates. Yeah. It was either – that was the craziest thing, man, about the, like watching the game this week was watching you and Jermaine. I was like, man, these are my two young – like I was roommates <laughs> with you guys on the road a lot. With, with yeah, when we played up, yeah. We was, yeah. That was crazy. Yeah, that was – yeah, we go way man. back. I've we go way Curry back. for a while. We Curry's been back. on every AU program, though. <laughs> yeah, I did. I played on every AAU program in New England. Yeah, the I last one was with Expressions. I was, yeah. A, yeah. But that the Expressions was my real stint. And that was like, you know, playing mm-hmm. with you, playing under Z. Man, those were the best times. Those were the best times. Mm-hmm. So, so is, I think are, I was, yeah. That are, was Mar- Marcus, really. are you in Omaha now because Scurry and Caleb and those guys were there? Like, it was that like a – was Mac thinking like one step ahead, trying to get Marcus on campus by bringing in Scurry and – Everything like helping you recruit you? <laughs> no, that's not why. But like, <laughs> definitely like having them here made me realize like, yeah, like it works for guys out from out in New England. Mm-hmm. You know, they mm-hmm. on my visit, those Caleb and Jordan were the ones who took care of me. You know, showed me the ropes a little bit how how it is out here. So, yeah, definitely they definitely made a definitely helped me me, me coming to Crane for sure. That visit, no, was I knew. Fun. Yeah, I like Jordan. Did you know Omaha well when you were showing Marcus around, or were you? Yeah, I did because I had been. That was my – because when was your first visit? When was your visit when we went to, like, Slate to, like, TC? That was, like uh, – that was, like, June of, like, 2017. Um, yeah. No, it might have been August of 2017. Yeah, yeah, yeah. August 2017. Yeah. So, I – that was – that was great because I knew – I knew you were going to come because you were comfortable, man. You were comfortable in Omaha. Like, I knew it was going to work. Because <laughs> you were just – because, like, I mean, everybody knew, like, you just wanted to be in a gym and, like, just yeah. – just who. And so I was like, man, you know, like your whole visit, you was like, when we go to the gym, I was like, yeah, you're coming here. <laughs> like, I was like, I you're comfortable. <laughs> he did. But so I don't think, I don't he think, did tell that like, story Matt, before. Matt, so you were saying, like, I don't, yeah, I don't Jordan, think Jordan was like, <laughs> Jordan, Jordan was like, on Marcus's visit, I knew he was committing. Like, it, he was like, as soon as he got here, I was like, I knew that dude was, was going to be a, boy. yeah. Just because I'm I was saying. like, you're, your access to the gym, I was like, he he just – this dude doesn't want anything but a small – like a school like this where he can just hoop. Like, I'm like, he's – Yeah, it's, honestly, it's that's what I'm looking for. So, no no, yeah. no I don't think, but I, mm-hmm. Go ahead, go ahead. And where it's support – like, all the people support, all the people nice, like, genuine. So, Hell yeah. Mm-hmm. I knew you yeah. – I, I knew it. I was, I'm glad it worked out. I don't think it was, had anything to do with, like, even – really. I think you knew that Caleb and I, like, were comfortable and, like, we could operate there too. And so, yeah, that's, like, what I'm that's why you were like, all right, like, if these dudes can operate here and like have like in like hooping to that level, like it'll work for me. But mm-hmm. yeah, and I'm glad you're still out there doing your thing, man. I'm glad. I'm so happy. I'm happy we had AU and college. Obviously, college is even better. Yeah, man, for sure. So we got we got to get this thing started right, though. I don't know if I want to make you mad first or if I want to make you happy first. Maybe I should just like make you mad first and then, like, <laughs> like ease you into the. Well, like, something. What is it about like, LeBron? No, Jordan? no, that's that's over with. We're done with that. That's <laughs> we don't need that. It is over that's with. You're right. That'll be that'll, that'll, over with. Yo, we we're getting. Don't worry. We're planning. We're gonna have Wait, that that definitively that definitively in the summer. I got I got screenshots approved. Marcus is a com- converted now, so don't even worry about it. Uh, <laughs> uh, but your uh your boy got starched, man. The comeback. Oh I'm gonna start there. God. Yeah, like. All this, Connor's back. He's serious now. All that stuff. You bought all of that, and then he comes in. I mean, he. If I'm being honest, he was. She. He looked really good. You know, he looked good the first round. His, his body looked good. He looked. Yeah. He looked ready. He's just on them leg kicks. He wasn't prepared. 
But I mean, his power isn't the same up there anymore, man. He's not. Starting, I know he's. He's not starting boxing, fibers. You know, he's taking a boxing like his stance is a boxing stance. He's not. He's too much boxing going on. You know that, that that's what that's what I saw from the fight. That's what my brother saw, and that's what my dad saw. So, and then he came up with something about too much boxing. And was, I mean, I mean, he lost. You know, I I can't. He always, I have comes, no he always comes out. He always comes out with something though. Like yeah, he lost. I mean, obviously, I think the game the UFC like. Every year it changes. Like, I feel like evolution of it. Yeah. So he, he he just has to get. You know. Yeah. He, he hasn't had. He hasn't had activity. I mean, you can't count the cowboy fight. That doesn't count. I so before either. that, his his last win was in two thousand six. Was uh Eddie Alvarez. Yeah. Before yeah. that was two thousand sixteen. So it's like he hasn't been active in that sport. Yeah. It's so new that it changes every year. Like, like that leg kick. I think it's new. Like that specific leg kick going at that calf. Yep. It's a new thing in UFC because like, and once you get kicked there, it's like. I mean, only like the Nate Diaz's can get through that. Like, if we're being honest, <laughs> your boy. <laughs> only, right. only a select few guys can 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 uh, fight off that pain. But so who's there'll next, be a rematch? Who's next for your guy though? Like he's taking L's. Like this is like five years of L's basically. He went to box Floyd, got whipped, got whipped by Nate. Got whipped by Nate. He beat Nate, Nate though. He beat Nate. Yeah, but he like decisioned Nate. Nate like choked him out. Like. He could have killed him if there wasn't. He's a gonna he's gonna fight mm-hmm. Poirier again in in, in in the summer. See, I hate that fight because he's not ready for that. He needs like a build up. Wants it. I'm here for it. Why does he always get every rematch he wants too? Like, <laughs> what is it? What is it about? I that? know you know how Dana is. Dana doesn't care. Because yeah, they just want to shot call yeah, He's a shot caller. No, they, 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 they saw Dana. Dana was so mad Connor lost. He just mm-hmm. wants, he wants the big he wants the big money fights. Yeah. You know, I agree. I don't think Connor deserves it. I don't think he deserves the fight, but UFC is different than, than every other sport. Like, True. it's not who deserves it, it's who brings in the most revenue. Yep. I want to see their mm-hmm. Max rematch because Max was boxing dudes up that Kelvin Cater. I don't want to see that. <laughs> Why don't you want to see? <laughs> you don't know who to root for. In that Max look good. I do. I want to see Max versus Volkanovski. I want to see that again. Yeah, that needs to happen. Even though I do think Max beat him. Yeah, that was, those were two good fights, though. That's tough. Yeah. yeah. It's not like, it's so not we'll like, see. uh, one of them got whipped, and it was like ten rounds. Like I don't even know, but they're clearly the two best fighters in that division, though. That's tough, right? Like yeah. else is even in that. No one's else is even in that league. Kelvin Cater was supposed yeah. to be, and then Max beat this, beat him senseless. That yeah. wasn't even like a good fight. I felt bad for Kelvin in that fight. I was like, ooh. Cater's Cater, Cater was out from where me and Scurry live. Did you know oh, really? that uh, Scurry? Yeah, yeah. I, I I met Cater when I, I watched him train one time when I was home. Oh, really? Like Michael's kind of cool with him, so yeah, it was cool. To see, I mean, I didn't like seeing that. I didn't like seeing it beat down like that, but <laughs> but uh, he like I remember him telling me he wants to fight Max Holloway. This is before the car. Where, where did he, he work out? He works out like right by low, right right by low. He's from um, I forget where he's from, like Western Mass. So yeah, but he works out in low. He works at a few places. So Lowell that's, that's where he's yeah, yeah that's where he's from. It's it's cool. It was cool seeing that. Yeah, he's got nice hands though, but he did not I match know, up. I didn't know he was from here. Yeah, Max looked crazy nice. Though. That mm-hmm. was crazy. That was the best for was He's, the, I mean, he's the best boxer in UFC. You got to be the way he looking th- like that. I thought he had lost a step too. I was worried about him. I was like, man, he might get start. You know that like wearing. I remember chair, you did tell me. I mean, I agree up. with you because all them, but I think no sparring that that, that that that's helped him. Yeah, that's big. Yeah. Like Robbie yeah, Lawler, just, like Robbie Lawler had like a good second half of his career because he didn't spar for like years, and like yeah. his like saved his chin essentially for maybe uh-huh. three or four more years. So, yeah, that's serious stuff. Exactly. Yeah, well, I just wanted to give you some give you some crap because Connor got starched in the, you know, he's overrated. Yeah. He's been overrated. Tough, he's been overrated rough. since the jump, but he keeps like you know, picking good fights. For that was himself, rough seeing so. that. That was a bad, that was a bad night. But then Brady won the Super Bowl. You know, like a week that's later. Right. So. That's right. That's what I wanted I was, to get into I next. Good. Let me make yeah, you feel so good you, now. Yeah. You, like, uh, listen, let's give like credit where it's due. He jumped the bandwagon, but he, you know, you got to ride with the goat. Like that's like, you, you want to win at the end of the day. Every, every fan wants to win. Every player wants to win. So you just ride with the winners. Like, so uh, Marcus yeah. saw new England and he was like, nah, I'm going to go rock with Brady. <laughs> Jordan stayed on the New England bandwagon because Cam came on. He's like, I'm going to ride with Cam for a little bit here until the wheels fall off. And then that wheel Marcus... fell off quick. <laughs> quick, bro. It was like, it was right after, 
after Cam got COVID, it was like I don't even <laughs> like Sundays anymore. Like this is yeah, wild. I even like, watched it, one Patriots game. I ain't gonna lie. Man, I <laughs> that watched, watched one. Oh, I tortured myself. I to- I just yeah. I tortured myself though because I just was upset that the Bills were killing like that. But that's neither here nor there. What was your first? Yeah. What was your? Uh... There was a minute there where you thought the Patriots were going to be okay, like they were going to be back in the playoffs and like continuing the game. When was that? What would they beat? I forget. What? At, when they Seahawks. when they only lost to the Seahawks. Okay, yeah, last, that's right. Like, yeah, at the end because Cam didn't punch it in. Mm-hmm. I was like, nah, we still win in the division. Like we <laughs> we like that. We- Joy, you can. You should share everybody around here. They were like, oh, like it's the system. That's why Brady was successful. It's the system. I'm like, Yo, I was. I, I think I jacked that for like about two weeks, three weeks. I don't know. I was like, I was like no, why would no, he, no. I, I was bitter though. What I realized now, see, because we can look back, we can grow, we learn from mistakes we make, mm-hmm. right? Like I, I now can be like, I was upset that he left. That's all it was, because I was like, why would he leave? Like, that I wasn't even make sense that. And now I'm like, no, no, it makes sense. Now it makes perfect sense. Get paid. Get Show everyone that you can win with Completely. a better check. Exactly. No. Yeah, I was, weather. I was making him, I was Bay? mad that he left. I was mad that he yeah, yeah he knew Bay? he would have what? some players around him. He was no, but <laughs> you know it too. I said, I used to say, it. I was like, he did the classic New Englander thing to do <laughs> like, do all your dirty work in your 20s and, 40s. and 30s and, <laughs> and all that. Well, no, 20s and 30s yeah. in New England, and then you move right down to Florida, you go right to the sunshine, and you go out there and retire. You, I was thinking retire, but he's like, no, yeah, I'm gonna do, do the 40s, 50s there, in, in, in Canada. Yeah, he's gonna do. He's gonna work in his forties, fifties, and just keep plugging out Super Bowl. But dude, I was tell, oh. I was telling Jordan last week though, the be, like I don't I don't know if Belichick's that good. Like, because if you, I, I was like I went back and looked at it. Yo, I, Matt I has like, made me. Matt has made me question Belichick. Correct? Yeah. So listen to this, Marcus. Nah. Like, so Belichick has missed the playoffs eight years of his coaching career. Seven of those years, he didn't have Brady as his starter. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that one year with Cassell, whatever. Matt, yeah, Matt, Matt Castle, Castle, Castle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. But no, seven. The only year they, the only year he missed the playoffs with Brady was the year after they won the first Super Bowl, like when Brady was like twenty-one, like still a pub. Yeah. So he's missed really? the, every every time he doesn't have Brady, he misses the playoffs, dude. So like, wait a minute. Yeah. What if he's not that coach? <laughs> what if it really is Brady this whole time? Like, what if it's That's like the point? Well, the bad thing, the thing is, like, I I don't even know because like the way New England's looking now, it's like. And the way coaching goes in, like, coaching careers go, like, it's, like, I don't even know if he's at the point. Like, they're obviously going to give him a chance and he'll have a, ch- like, chance to, like, have a few more years. But, like, he's not going to be able to, like – there's nothing now we can say that's, like – I mean – Even if he, I guess – I mean, he, maybe wins a Super Bowl, then we can be like that. But, like, here's the other here's The other part the of way it, it's too. looking right now, it's, like – Here's the other part of it, too. It, <laughs> here's the other part of it, too. What does his coaching tree look like? Like how many of those dudes leave yeah. leave, the, leave Brady and Gone. Belichick and then go and be successful? None of them, right? They're all yeah. like yeah. they all get cooked in two or three years, and then they're back in New England trying to help mm-hmm. out. So like mm-hmm. I I really think it is Brady. I think they're just all trash. <laughs> nah, <laughs> They've been trying yeah. all trash, dude. It's just Brady. It's him. Like he just has like a crazy leadership quality about him that he can bring whatever the rosters are, however many dudes that are on the roster, he can bring all those dudes together. And make them believe that they're the best in the yep. world. That's it. Yeah. I just that's like, like the I'm, great I'm supremely that's convinced. Like one of the great he went to the Tampa Bay Buccaneers and won a ring in year one. The Bucks, dude. Stupid. They were it that's a even, trash it organization. Still, it still doesn't, even, it still doesn't even make sense. It still doesn't even make sense. He beat Breeze, Rogers, and Mahomes one 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 back to you. Let line them up, knock them down. Like you gotta be kidding me. I hear no lies, man. It is over crazy. with. Like there is nothing it is crazy. To talk about. It's time to just like he did it. time to just admit that he's lapping the field at this point. There is no he has no peer. It's Brady. Yeah. And then you can like, all right, Montana this was good, Main was good, Rogers was good, all that. You can put them They up. were good. Yeah, there, there's no comparing in that sport. Yeah, they all know now. They all know. know. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's it's it goes, it goes for itself. I think I think they're all just shook that he's even still playing. Like imagine being like Peyton Manning and being like, holy shit, he's still going. I know. That's what I mean. He's like, he has like new new blood to compete against. Like because it's not even like it's not even like, yeah, he's he's like the best Hall of Famer ever. 
but it's like he's still going. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he's we should crazy. Not- Let's move on because everybody's going to start thinking this is like a Brady podcast. We don't stop talking about him every week or whatever. Um, yeah. <laughs> we seriously, we, we, the last three weeks, we've just we like do. opened up with Brady and have not stopped essentially. Last week was, it was just an ode to Brady. That was just, mm-hmm. we had a lot of fun. We spent, yeah, like, we, 90, we, we spent like 90 minutes. Well deserved. Brady. Um, but yeah, you guys are coming off that big win over George or uh, Villanova. Um, yes, sir. Like, are you, are you glad that this week is what how, setting up to be what it is after that, after beating Georgetown, beating Villanova, that you guys can get get some rest, uh, recover a little bit, and kind of work on yourselves for, you know, the last couple weeks of the season before the NCAA tournament? Do you feel like that's a pretty good time for that to happen? Yeah, he big time. I, I think it's huge for us. I think we can, can all get a little, a little bit better. You know, physically, mentally, emotionally, we can all work in, in practice. Now we can kind of work on ourselves. So, and because the past few weeks we haven't been able to do that, it's all been scout. It's all been work, working how to beat the other team instead of trying to improve on what we need to improve on. So, and then just kind of being able to decompress just a little bit, sit back. You know, we, we've we've had like multiple road trips these past couple of weeks, so being able to be here for a little long period of time, go to you know, get. Get our get our books done and stuff like that. It's it's, mm-hmm. it's good. I think I think it'll make a difference down the stretch. And so yeah. Were you guys really confident going into that game on Saturday? Were you guys? We you were like where, like you know, where I, you're at. Yeah, I mean, we knew we we knew we could beat them. You know, we knew if we just kind of just you know just play the way we play. You know, and I think you know this 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 time you know for us is. You know, playing against a top five team, it kind of you know brings that extra juice, brings that extra edge to you. We we knew we knew it was a huge win for us, to, you know, for us for the for the March for March Madness and for you know trying to win a regular season biggest title like last year. So we knew there were some things on the line, and we knew we had to pull this one through, and you know we did that. Yeah, I think like you guys, if I'm doing the math right, I think you actually control your own destiny now. Because That's what, what I'm saying. What you guys have left and what Nova has left, if you guys all play those games, if you beat Nova one more time, winning percentage at best ties you, which means you yeah. win it again. So that win on Saturday. Is Nova going to play all their games? I don't know. But whatever they have left, I don't know if they're going to add any. If they add any. There's, just, there's no shit. way they play all their games. I just don't see how it's possible. Oh, they won't play 20. No way. No. That's what I'm saying. They won't even get, they won't even get close. Because there's just yeah, not so, enough time. No, for them. There's not enough time for them to add all the games in. So that's what I'm saying, yeah. So the goal for us is to win out these next four. And, yeah. You know, that's 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 our goal. And we know we know what's possible, but we know it's gonna be hard. So mm-hmm. we gotta we definitely got some stuff to work on. But like I don't know, Jordan, both of you guys, like what's an eleven do you like an eleven day layoff? Like what is is there are there negatives to that or do you just all look at it from the, from a building standpoint of what you guys can gain from it? Like you were pretty sharp. Yeah, I don't know. I was, I was, I was gonna, bad to like shut that off, you know. Yeah, I was gonna, I was gonna ask you about that because I was like, yeah, you guys are just, I don't know. It's weird. It's a weird time of year to have this kind of layoff. Like we, I, I don't think I've ever had like end of February like kind of long layoff. Like, yeah, we. It's definitely. I mean, there's obviously a downside to it. You know, not playing for over a week will be in that first game back. You'll be a little unfamiliar mm-hmm. with everything, but mm-hmm. you know, I'm. I get why, you know, this year is just so different. You know, you yeah. season we've been going since August. We mm-hmm. we've been really good with this COVID stuff. You know, we haven't really had a case, you know, knock on wood. And we you know, we haven't been shut down. We haven't missed we have we're the only team probably like in the country to not miss a game. Feels like or we it. have to reschedule mm-hmm. a game. So like and then you know, I think compared to this with this year, it's just a lot. I think it's more emotionally draining with everything. You know, you gotta. Mm-hmm. It's just different. You know, with COVID, you know, you gotta schedule's different. You know, you're. It's like basketball school, basketball school. You can't really have really like like an outlet because you don't want to put the team at risk. Mm-hmm. You gotta be smart. So having this layoff, coach sees it as like a time to decompress, a time to, you know, get your get your get your mental good, get your get your body right. You know, we have some guys that have some bumps and bruises that they can get better, you know, for this last stretch of the season. So I think there is a downside to it, but I think the positives outweigh the negatives in the situation. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's what Coach said. Because, you know, I I bet, I mean, I'm guessing Coach could have gotten a game in, you Mm -hmm. know, maybe like a non conference game just Mm -hmm. to play. But um, 
he, you know, I agree with him. We talked about it. He's, yeah, I think it's best. And we'll we'll, we'll get after him in practice. We'll we'll play him mm-hmm. now. Mm-hmm. He's, you know, we so. Nah, yeah, we'll, nah, we'll still I, be ready. You don't. I can don't imagine it's that. good. Yeah, it must be nice to have some time right now. Just That's what like I'm saying. Yeah, decompress. That's true. That's yeah, good. Especially now because he's like you're in. After this break, there's no more breaks, right? Like, because it's exactly, gonna be, yeah, mm-hmm. that's gonna be taken mm-hmm. to the end. So now yep. is an important, t- important time. So it's good that you guys are coming at these two wins. Those are big. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like, I'm guessing if we didn't beat Bill, we we'd probably try to schedule a game. You yeah. know, I don't know. You know, how, you, you know how that is. You know how it goes. Yeah, exactly. That's what I was saying. So it's good to finish strong going into oh. this last break. So yeah, you guys can make it really happen now going forward. That's what I'm saying. You know, no one we beat them gives us like it would have so sucked awesome. to lose. Yeah. Have eleven days off after after a loss. We could just sit on it. But yeah. Yeah. So winning versus Nova makes this eleven day break a lot easier. Much better. Much better. <laughs> yeah. So what's a typical uh, I could feel it. What's a typical day for you like when you're trying to you mentioned like trying to stay safe. Um but then, like, it's, like, school, basketball, like, all that stuff can get kind of monotonous without some type of social deal to shake it up, right? Like, what's, what is isolation like for you every day now? Like, what's the typical day? I mean, I've always been, like, you always scary knows. I'm always, yeah, yeah like, it's you know, true. Wrong dude to ask. I, I'm always, I don't do nothing, like, I don't go, I don't, I'm always, like, on, 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 on chill mode. But uh, it's definitely different this year, you know, but, you know, a, a day for me, like, like a day with practice, because I mean, I didn't, we don't have practice today. Mm-hmm. So, a day, a day with practice, you know, wake up, we have breakfast at like 8 eight forty five. So, we'll go there. But so, we have like a, a 30 minute period. That it's we eat at Harbor, and like no one else, no other team is allowed to be in that uh, the Harbor cafeteria for that 30 minute period, just us. So, we stay away from everybody else. And then, uh, Zoom class or in class, you know, they they we, we're still allowed to go to class, but you know, we I sit but uh, far away from other students mm. just to be safe. And then um, practice usually practice around two thirty, two uh two there. We're practicing, and then you know we just we just I just we have dinner and then you chill, stay in your room, or you know if you want to go get some food, just be really smart. You know, it's it's kind of mm. like an everyday thing, so. Honestly, like for me, like life isn't that much different. It's just like it is different at the end of the day. Like we don't see you, Matt. Like at practice, you can you like you don't have that social kind of thing. You just see you you just see the people in your program, and that's about it. Mm-hmm. So it's definitely different. Like, but um, it's not that much different for me. I can't lie. Like I'm 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 always chilling. But that's what I was wondering. Like I was wondering if guys are like driving themselves crazy with this stuff because the isolation just – it can drive you nuts if you're thinking about the same things every single day with no escapism, yeah. right? You know, like – Yeah. I mean, jo- Johnny – Johnny. I mean, we went to, like um, – what's the golf place called again? What's it? Top, top Golf. We went to Top Golf like a couple weeks ago. Mm-hmm. You know, that was that was nice. And, you know, when we're on the road, we're usually – you know, we all bring our game systems and we'll set up on the projectors and we'll mm. play games. So, so we, the, we do little stuff to try – it's still, yo, it's still team dinners and stuff, right? On the road and all that. Like, y'all be going out. Different. I mean, where it's like, where they bring to your room. It's, you no, know, what we'll have it like in like a ballroom. Or we'll go, it depends where we're at. We'll, if it's like the East Coast and like Washington, D.C., mm-hmm. like everything shut down. So, like, it, it'll be in a ballroom in the hotel, you know, isolated from, every, from everybody else. But the, the hotel bring the food and stuff? Yeah, hotel. Like, oh, yeah, okay, cool, cool. But some places we have gone out. We, we have gone to a Just where house. you can. Yeah, where we – like Marquette, we did the uh, same okay, spot. Okay, okay, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that, that same sense. spot. And um, home home games we haven't really, like, only one time before a game. It was, it was the Villanova game. We went to Spencer's. Oh, dang. That's, that's the only time this year. That's it? You haven't been to Jake no, Gilbert's yet? No Jake Gilbert's yet? Oh, so y'all have been balling like this and you haven't even had Jay Gilbert. That's what I'm saying, man. <laughs> Undefeated, yo. And if so, you t- that's crazy. No. I didn't even they, know. Harper, Harper is actually pretty good. Like they they provide no, good food. That, I've I've heard that's good it damage. sounds good. Yeah. yeah. I was touching something. Ain't nothing like Jay yeah. Gilbert, so no. Nah. Yo, I can't believe that. That that was really the ritual last year. Yeah. We no, looked man. forward to that. 
Because they like would me, let us. That was the best because they would let us throw the games on. Like we could watch all the yeah. NBA games in there. So it was like that's when it became. That's when the pregame meal became fun. Like that's that. what Mitch and I were. We were talking about the other day. Like hey, we missed the, the, the food. Yo, what? It's like <laughs> when like when when life's normal. Like being an athlete on, on crane basketball, you just like you eat so good and like we still so do right good, now. We still, like, I'm so not complaining. Good. Like I'm still grateful for the. But like yeah, yeah, yeah. When yeah of life's course, normal, of course. like. I have a recruit every other every other weekend and like man, go to dinner. Man, we 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 would eat at Jay Gilbert's twice a week. So we have, man, I have a steak twice a week. So like, <laughs> man, I don't have tell him, anymore, tell him, man. man, tell him, because I've been missing it. I was definitely missing it. I definitely I know took you it for granted. Like I remember my freshman year, I was so grateful. When I was like sophomore year, I was like balling. I'm like, man, mm-hmm. I'm balling. Mm-hmm. No, I was having my too life crazy. now. Like I'm eating good. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> COVID, I'm like, dang, like this is crazy. It's true. Like it's so true. But you get um, to a point. Yeah. That's too funny. We got a bunch of fan questions in. I don't know. Jordan, do you wanna <clears throat> is there anything you got for him before we jump into the fan Q and A? Because we got honestly, the fans came through today. Like they got some creative ones. So oh, we got some good fans. Yeah, the yeah. fans came through. We I thought they were just gonna be like, "When's he going to the Twitter pro?" Twitter and all that. I thought there was gonna be like fifteen NBA draft questions. And like, mm-hmm. I'm like, cut them all off. Like, mm-hmm. we only got one NBA draft question. Is from a Seton or- Hall. It's from a Seton Hall fan. So I actually understand why a Seton Hall fan would ask that. Like, <laughs> yeah, you probably- <laughs> probably want him gone quick. <laughs> They've seen yeah. too much of like, this. When can? Yeah. When is he? When is he leaving this conference? Well, I tried to ask it a nice way. He's like, "Is Mike helping him and everything like that? Like, <laughs> helping him like with the draft and like when's he gonna go and like is he done bombing threes on Seton Hall? Please, like, it was all it was pretty funny. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm like, no, nah, we're not asking NBA draft. That's hilarious. But I love that it was from a Seton Hall fan. Like, I don't know, but Jordan, that's you hilarious. Think, uh, will we let the fans have at it. No, nah, we'll let the fans have at it. I want to dive into. These are good. These okay. are good. Yeah, these are good. So the first one. Um, this first one's kind of funny. Uh, it's for all of us, actually. So, if Bud Crawford invited you to his gym and was looking, oh, nah. <laughs> was looking for a sparring partner, would you step <laughs> into the ring? Who want to answer that first? Because uh, you know, actually, answer. you know what? I'll go first because I was thinking about this. Like, I used to, I used to box like when I was younger, um, like in the gym, and everything, like training and all that stuff, like. And I'm telling you right now, I would rather face – it was easier fighting the guys who hit hard than the dudes who were fast. Because at least with the dudes who hit hard – because you got headgear on and stuff when you're sparring. So, like, at least with the dudes who hit hard, you can, like, see it coming most of the time. And you can either roll with it a little bit and absorb the shot. Yeah. Or you can smother it with your, with, your, with your guard and, like, it won't hurt as bad, you know. But with dudes yeah. who are fast, like, you don't see half of the shit coming. It like just you know what I'm saying? and he, Bud is a fast dude. and hits hard. Yeah, Bud is a dude who's fast and he hits hard as hell. So yeah, it's like a bad Not dream. Half. It's like a bad dream. It's yeah. like a, oh. I would it's spar. I would spar ten rounds with Deontay Wilder before I sparred one with Bud. Like it would hurt way different. Way different. Yeah. yeah. Like he'd maybe because I would forget. I would forget. It's family. unexpected hurt. Yeah. Because you yeah no because you know you wake up and you're like what happened you, yeah yeah you're like what happened you're like well you got drilled by three straight to the chin and you didn't see any of them like oh really <laughs> like it's just different mm-hmm. <laughs> not fighting fast not. guys yeah I mean to answer his question I'm not I'm not I'm not, I'm not <laughs> yeah. in no ring I'm going to his I'm going to his boxing gym and some jeans maybe a hoodie like I, I, same looking real I, casual make sure there's no I'm athletic gear whatsoever. <laughs> I gotta, I'm gonna tell him I got it like a date and like uh, I might, minutes, I might I wear gotta a go. full suit just so he knows I'm not fighting. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you gotta have no some plan. Chance. You have to have facts. You gotta have an escape plan. No. Yeah. No. Yeah, and no. Scurry, your dad, your Scurry, your dad boxes too, right? Doesn't your dad box, Jordan? Mm-hmm. Yeah, so you mm-hmm. know exactly what he sparks you know, too. Yeah. They all in his gym. Yeah. Yeah, you know exactly what you'd be getting mm-hmm. into, and it's a no, right? I'm still not doing it. Yeah, right. Yeah, you know how I, I, each sparring goes, everyone going to tune in, everyone going to mm-hmm. come and watch. Like, nah, mm-hmm. I'm all uh-huh. good. Mm-hmm. Especially so that spar. Yeah. Oh, let's watch, Bud. The hell no. It'd be on like yeah. TMZ. It'd be on like TMZ tomorrow. Like Bud Crawford, like knocks out college basketball player, basically. Like, yeah, yeah, knocks out kills. Yeah, <laughs> probably something about the way I move. He might not like, and he might just mm-hmm. hit me a little harder, so I'm good. Yeah, he's he's like a mean like he, the way he fights too. He's mean. Yeah, I mean, yeah. If it was so much, he's like a bully. Like, he's a bully. If it was like like 
Like Lomachenko, like I know he's nice, <laughs> yeah, but he's yeah, nice. Yeah, yeah. He's right. nice. He's a nice dude. Like I know he'll feel bad when he beats me up, but I'm not gonna feel bad. No. <laughs> if Bud, if so, you like, step in the ring with Bud, he takes it personal immediately. Like it's like, oh yeah, you it's beat, like it's, you it's like the it's, it's like the Jordan thing. Like I'm taking that personal. Like, right. Nah, <laughs> It, 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 you can go in there yeah, with the best like of intentions. You're like, I know I can't beat you, but I'm gonna try. Like, if you do that, he's like, I'm gonna kill you because you have stepped in here. Yeah, yeah. It's like steps in the ring. He's like, and I took that personally. Like, mm-hmm. well, wow, okay, <laughs> exactly. No more. Wow. Yeah, I'm, yeah. No chance. I'm stepping in now. That ring. No chance. All right. That is three no's on sparring Bud Crawford. Hard nose. Hard nose. Hard nose. <laughs> um, this question is actually pretty good. Um, I like this one because I think it. Uh, it's a unique way to like think about the game a little bit. So um, this, this uh, questioner wants to know when you're on the floor and like running the show, basically uh, doing your, you know, running the plays, running the sets, getting everybody organized. What's the hardest part about like commanding an offense, like commanding the game, controlling mm-hmm. the game. Cause that, you know, That's you hear cool. all the time, the point guard controls the pace dictates the terms. And that usually is how styles are decided basically. So what's the hardest part about doing that? The hardest part I'd probably say is oh, that's that's a good question. Mm-hmm. That's a good I thought question. so too. That's, <laughs> yeah, right. that's a really good there's, question. There's a, lot of dyna- like, a there's a lot of dynamics of being a point guard, especially in this offense where like we you know, discovering that we got like a million sets. Man. We got a million and we, you know, I I try and um turn over that my Turnover. Turnover, right? Look, man. <laughs> and um, you know, I try and make sure we're all on the same page at all times. Like, you know, mm-hmm. when coach calls out a set, you know, we we I don't necessarily want to tell the like everybody because the other team might hear, they might know, mm-hmm. you know, they they scout. So like, the key is to try and get everyone on the same page before you know if we have a set. And but also like, hardest part is probably trying to get everyone involved. But also staying aggressive at the same time, you know. Mm. You know, I think I, you know, I like it's. I always try and take the approach of stay, stay aggressive at all times. But sometimes the way defense guards, you know, me is, you know, they're trying to, you know, they're trying to, they're trying to give something up to take to take more of me away. So I, trying to figure out that early on, is is probably the um, is the hardest part. I'd say like. Just trying to figure out what what are they doing to try and stop us? You know, they're obviously going to leave something open, and they, and 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 want us and want them to want have have us beat them this way. So just trying to find that early on, so so that, so early on I can figure that out, and then once I get that going, and then they'll be like, oh, we can't stop them this way, and then it's a, then it's a wrap. You can kind of just just go. So I probably say that, but you know, think- it is. Jay Wright right. said after the Jay Wright said after the game that they threw different looks at you on Saturday and you pretty much figured them all out essentially. Like, is there anything you don't um, or you haven't seen or you don't feel comfortable attacking at this point? I mean, I guess you shouldn't answer that second part, but <laughs> that's don't answer that second part. But like in terms of like when defenses throw <laughs> stuff, set up. <laughs> yeah, I know. I was like, oh shit, this is how we guard Creighton. <laughs> uh, like, is there anything you're not you you haven't seen yet in terms of a defense trying to? Uh, take away as many of your guys' strengths as possible out there? Um, I think UConn probably did the best. You know, they they run like, you know, they really try to trap the ball screen. They mm. really try – not it's necessarily trap it, but really – it. Uh, and then they – instead of tagging off the strong side, they, they, they tag off the weak side corner. Yeah, so it's like, like a, it's a tough they pass. Like, mm-hmm. They don't let you turn the corner. They try yeah. to so say I, say I have a ball on the on the left side. They yeah. take away the but the bottom guy on the way right corner mm-hmm. is the guy that's gonna tag. So it's like it's hard to make that pass. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, I think we I think we do a good job of like the key for that is to just mm-hmm. almost don't even use it, just hold it, and then kind of just dribble backwards almost, and then just mm-hmm. zip that pass over. So, mm-hmm. but like in that case, it's hard to be aggressive downhill because they're just taking it away. But yeah, yeah. but you know just. Constantly trying to figure out ways to like, like if the team's gonna do that, then let's let's get out in transition. Let's try and let's try and get them out in transition quick. You know that's what I would tell my teammates. Like let's just go quick now. That and not let them set up because when they're set up, they're really hard to beat. Or mm-hmm. kind of just attack on like the third side of of, of the possession, not not the first. I'm just like maybe the third. Mm-hmm. So just little stuff like that. That as a point guard, I've realized I've 
I think I've grown a lot is trying to figure out defenses and then trying to what's the best approach of of attacking it first so it opens up everything else down in the second half. Yep. No, like you saw, I think the other thing you guys did on Saturday too was you changed your your ball screen coverages a little bit. You played them a little bit differently. Um, but I think you were trying to make Villanova basically like pull up off the dribble because you guys play that game really well. You're good at coming off ball screens and mm-hmm. you know coming off the dribble and shooting, and it doesn't really um, change all that much in terms of your efficiency. Like you, Dens, Mitch, you're all good at like off the dribble shooters. Um, Villanova seemed a little uncomfortable doing that. Like they're more spot up guys. Like they want to get downhill, get into the paint, use that jump stop pivot where they can reverse the floor. And, and then when they get you guys in rotations, then they find their spot up guys who are already in position to just let it fly essentially. So was that like something you guys identified? Like, Hey, let's, let's, let's play the ball screen a little bit differently and make them shoot off the dribble more. Yeah. I mean, we knew that. I think like they put Coach Matt Huss, they all they they get into the stats of other players and you know, Huss is really good at that. I mean we all are, all the coaches are and they figured out they, they make way more threes off the catch than off the dribble. Mm. Like it's like way more I like it's like crazy. like the stat is crazy. Like they don't they don't really shoot off the dribble as much, maybe mid ranges, but in terms of threes, they don't really you know, they I mean and they had good looks too, so you know, next game we're gonna have to try and take those away. Mm-hmm. But um but we knew that if they they would they would have a lot more success scoring if they got us in rotation and they got yeah. downhill and we overhelped and they and they got you know and up fake so we knew that if we just stayed in front it was it was a lot of it was just one on one defense you know we knew that going in we knew that we couldn't have, because they have five shooters out there at all times so you know we knew that going in they got, that we had to stay in front and you know our ball screen defense was just go under and you know make make them beat us off dribble threes. Or or one on one, or one on one post up scores. <clears throat> um, let's see what our next one is. Sorry, I was looking it up. Let's see. Uh, this next one is uh, which NBA? Pl- <laughs> I'm, I'm laughing at this one. Jordan, oh, good. This one. <laughs> go ahead, go ahead, because I'm gonna go on my tangent. Go ahead. Yeah, me. okay. I'm laughing about this one because um, so. This this person wants to know which NBA players do you try to model your game after? And the 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 comment is, I'm assuming his answers will be different than Fred Van Vliet and Mike Bibby. So like, let's just talk <laughs> about that. How first. annoyed do you get? Can we that? talk How about that first? Do you get, do you get annoyed? Are you just like you shake it off now? Or are you just annoyed? Like, is it still I, I don't even pay. I don't even look at it. I don't even. I mean, I don't. I, I don't know. I don't yeah. really even look at it to be That's honest. A, yeah, smart. Because I'm just like I now I'm forced to look at it because I'm looking at Craig Max Wolf stuff like yeah. to actually cover it right. And I'm like, this is ridiculous. Like, if you guys wanted to play like light skin look alike game, we could do that. But like, don't make this a college basketball comparison. Like, come on. Yeah. yeah. I don't know. I I, I, I don't love know. I love that Mike Bibby really. entered the conversation like this year. Like it was Fred Van Vliet first, and I'm just like. They don't, really, no, it's they don't really play the think, same way, and they look alike. So I'm like, okay, that's too easy. And then all of a sudden, like, Mike Bibby entered the conversation. And I'm like, I'm like, that dude looks like Marcus too. Like, why are we just doing lookalikes? Bibby yeah, played in an yeah. era where they didn't even set ball screens hardly. Like, that's neither not, of them played, play neither like of that. them, neither of them played in offense like Creighton. Neither no. of them, like, come on. Like, yeah. Bibby was like a one just, Hooper, like that he couldn't. He could, yeah, I mean, he was a scorer. And he was shooter, like a but, like, he, he was like an and one early two thousand yeah. style <laughs> basketball player. Yeah. We're not making this comparison to like twenty twenty one. Bat. I'm sorry, right. I can't. But it's I like just, light, it's like it. light skin six one point guard with a fade. It's like, come on, that's just and that's what they type in Google stock, and then <laughs> they, it comes up, and they're like, oh yo, let's compare him to Marcus. You're like, what? <laughs> Why, bro? I get so annoyed. I get so annoyed for you. It's okay. I'll get annoyed for you. Yeah. Because you don't see it. You're smart. You locked in. I feel you. I don't have. I'm not locked in. I'm not trying to pay Good. Don't. Don't. Because I do, and it's annoying. I see it. Yeah. What? That's another dude who looks just like him. Like, why are we doing this? Like, you can't. It's not just watch. Watch. And once in like a couple weeks, it's gonna be like, oh, he's starting to play like Jason Kidd. You're gonna be like, Jason Kidd. Jason Kidd's gonna be next. It will be. It will be for real. Uh, so, but the question was: the question was, and what NBA players do you model your game after? So, like, who do you, who do you like to watch? Who do you like to take things from? Who do you like to learn from? 
Yeah, I mean, obviously my brother. You know, mm-hmm. I've always, mm-hmm. I've always, I learned a lot of stuff. I, I'm, I, the way I play is a lot of it learned from him. You know, he kind of set the blueprint for me. I watched him throughout my whole life. So, got to go with him, number one. I mean, obviously we play different, you know, in, you know, he's six six. You know, I think I, you know, he's he's more of a guy who uses his, his height to his his advantage. I don't really have that to my advantage, but you know, what? we obviously play different. But I learn a lot from him. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I take a lot. From, you know, I watched Steve Nash growing up. You know, he's always been one of my favorite point guards. Just the way he, you know, finds advantages without his athleticism or he's not the fastest. He's not the, but I think he's one of the smartest. I think he's a great leader. I think he just finds holes in the defenses and really attacks that. And he, he played in an era where it was really slow, but I think the Suns in that era was the fastest team. And so just seeing him, just watching him play, and, you know, I think, I, you know, I, to this day I watch I watch games with him and just to try and learn from him and his ball screen reads and his – and just just his pace out there. And then, um, you know, I, I actually have – I have watched some, you know, I above the Van Fleet thing, you know, I – you know, just the way he, his pace and, you know, how he takes his time, mm-hmm. how he, you know, he's not the biggest guy, not the, not the fastest guy. And just the way he finishes on, around the rim and gets his, how he gets his three, his, his threes off is, is real cool. And his, his ball screen reads as well. And then, mm-hmm. you know, I don't, you know, models probably, I don't really model my game after anybody. That's, that's, that's hard, but I take things from other point guards. You know, I, I try and take like specific moves or like, you know, you know, I watch all point guys to be honest, but I don't. I wouldn't say I model my game after a specific one. Like, I'm not gonna watch Kyrie Irving and go out there and try and beat Kyrie Irving. Yeah. He's not right. realistic. Yeah. But I'll take things from him, and I'll like I watch him set up a ball screen reader. I watch him how he attacks a guy one on one, and how does he how does he get by someone? And that, like he he won't do anything crazy, but if you really look at it from like a perspective of trying to take everything from it, then Oh, I can see why, because he kind of he looked this way, but went but but went that way, and he shifted his body this way and went and went this way. So that's what I look at from smaller point guys in the NBA. But you know, I watch a lot of point guards. Like like I watch Kemba Walker play. I watch his. He has a really good crossover. He gets really low, and then that's like when when Kemba Walker drives down in the paint, he and gets under the hoop. He I don't know how he gets it off, but he gets it off real. real Real quick on like seven footers, like Scar, you you know what I'm talking about. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Watching the Celtics, you probably watch. No, absolutely, Celtics. absolutely. Yeah, like he's, no. he's you. Awesome. You've always had a very good like understanding in your game, like, and I think you just like what you're just talking about is just how you you know what works for you, and you know like what you can add to your. That's what I'm saying. Own, like what kind of applies to you, like what moves you're gonna make, like you know what moves you're gonna make, so you know which players to watch who have been in similar situations and all that. I've always noticed that kind of about you. So, like, I think that's just kind of what you're speaking to. Yeah, and, like, I watch Steph Curry, but I'll never – Yeah. Like, it's just unrealistic to, like, model yeah, my game. of course, of course, yeah. But, like, in terms of watching him play, how he runs runs mm-hmm. off the ball and figures out how to get open and just his pace the way he plays off the ball and gets the ball back and just cuts and then – just I watch stuff like that. We're like, oh, like, that's the best player in the world. He doesn't need the ball in his hands. Exactly. To, to be to, effective. To, yeah, yeah. Yeah, to be effective or to create space. You know, I growing up, I always thought I need the ball to create. I need to make a move on somebody. I need to break somebody down and make. Like, no, you don't necessarily. You can, and in mm-hmm. times of games, you're gonna have to. But like in terms, but if you want to be a complete point guard, complete, you know, scoring point guard, a guy, and you can you can. Uh, set ball you can you can set screens off the ball you can you can run off a down screen you can fade and uh up fake stuff like that i've I've learned from watching guys like that but in terms of modeling so much. yeah there, there isn't really a point guard I model but i take things from every point guard that i watch and you know that's why you know I, whenever there's, whenever there's nba games i'll tune into them and just just watch i watch everything honestly like not even basketball stuff i watch how we react with teammates like i watch the bet like like Steph Curry's a great leader. I always watch how he reacts to. Like you remember, he had like two points in the first half. He was walking off smiling, and then he had like thirty in the second half. It's just cool mm-hmm. seeing that. Mm-hmm. Like I've always, so I, I learn a lot from a lot of players. Not even in terms of basketball itself. I just try and like 
just just how, 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 like how do they how do they react to certain situations? So it's cool seeing that. Nice. All right. So the next, the, we're going to wrap up with these final two. I want to get your opinion about other players on your team. So the first one is about Sharif. Um, and this question is, I want to, what has Marcus seen from Sharif this season in terms of all around improvement in his game? And how would he compare, compare sophomore Sharif to freshman Sharif? Oh, we should probably mean, you know, him and, I think him and Christian, maybe hand in hand, the biggest jumps from, from Reef freshman to sophomore and Christian sophomore and junior, I think. Just the way Reef, I think Reef was just like, you already know, Reef was just like a Man. deer in the headlights freshman year. He was just, it'd be days everything would click, but then there'd be days everything wouldn't click. It was never like, in between because he would play one speed and, you know, I mean, it's not his, I mean, we we're all, as a freshman, I was like that. So it's like, there's mm-hmm. no, there's no, um, it's just like the process of working on it. And, you know, this, this year, I think he had a great, a great summer. I mean, he worked on his shot a lot. He, he's, he's, he's even being more of a leader, just talking to guys and um, he's just a more confident player. And, you know, he's not just, it's not just about defense with him. You know, he, that defense will always be, you know who he is, but that that is actually he 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 has a, a, an offensive tag. He knows how to read a ball screen. He he gets the scout now. He at freshman year he didn't really he didn't know everything going on like in terms of who he's guarding and mm-hmm. how he needs to who's the shooter or who how do I need to guard this guy? What happens if someone goes off a ball screen? Do I need a tag? Like now he gets all that and now he's growing. Now he's teaching other guys you know, the ropes a little bit. And, you know, I expect his sophomore junior year to be maybe even a bigger jump. So I'm real happy. I'm real happy for him. And, you know, I think he's going to have a great career. Do you guys go against each other a lot in practice these days? You said it's a lot of scout Yeah, I mean, stuff, we, so. yeah, it's a lot of scout stuff. So not as much as I want to, because, you know, I get better playing against Reef. Right. And I think he is better playing against Bad. me. So Bad. I think these next nice, uh, 10 days we will. Mm-hmm. Um, he is he is nursing. He has had a little ankle injury. Yep. That he's been nursing for a little while. Yeah. Which is which you know for a player like him, he uses his quickness. Probably that's probably his best. That's probably his best advantage. You know, on both ends of the floor, and that's probably went down a little bit because of his ankle injury. And he but he's nursing it, and that's why I think these eleven days off are really important for us because mm. he can he can really get you know get that leg a lot better. And but um. No, Reef has he's made a huge jump, and I'm real happy for him. As the last one is on Christian, this is Johnny Atala chiming in. So, um, shout out to John. We you probably miss him in practice too. Um, of course, must, I can't he, believe he, like, you guys aren't there. I That's know, the, I didn't not know, once. I like, <laughs> yo, Marcus. I said, to, I said to Matt, like, I actually was. I forget what it was. It might have been one of our first episodes. I was like, oh, oh it was the game. You were out, right? When you uh St. John's was your hamstring. I like was saying to Matt, I was like, yo, have you like did you see my practice? He's like, dude, I don't go to practices like mm-hmm. anymore. I was like, what? Like what what it's world crazy. is this? Like I didn't I literally didn't like quick process that. Like you you had told me, but I still yeah. didn't understand. I'm yeah. like, wait, nope, not one. You're not at practice. That's that's not that's not practice. If it's mm-hmm. if Matt's not there, was it even practice? Like <laughs> that's what I'm saying. Yo. Yeah, so John wants to know. John wants to know what's Christian. What do you think Christian's best dunk this year is? What would you vote for? Ooh, that's a tough one. He's had a lot of mm-hmm. good dunks. I'd mm-hmm. probably say the Kansas one. Oh, uh, the windmill oh, off yeah. the slip. Yeah, yeah. No, nah, it wasn't a windmill. It was. The oh, he didn't. Did he not windmill it? No, he didn't. There was a windmill mm-hmm. off the slip. He had another one too, though. You oh, okay. When he punched it, he just punched it through when that he one. Punched it. It was yeah. when he kind of gathered it, when he took one yeah, dribble, yeah, yeah. let dude bounce on him. He just went. I was like, whoa. Yeah. Like, from yeah, my angle, because I passed it to him, I was like, yeah. Man. He's like, like man. He, when he windmilled it off the slip, though, too, I was like, oh, no, he's he's on a different level right now. I mean, he was feeling something else. Mm-hmm. Did you and think that? Also you think one, he was like. Yeah. The, the, yeah. Nebraska dunk, that was that was dope. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that was the like. The, oh, <laughs> yeah. He that slowed up for that one, too. He's like, I'm going to punch this, and I'm going I'm to show the crowd something right here. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Robert, what was the one? Is, what was the one he he threw it down backwards? He, he that come, was uh that was that was uh Georgetown. Or, that was, that was cold. Was Georgetown. Pink, out, pink out game, yeah. That was cold. Yeah. Though. That yeah. was cold. But the Kansas one got at me because 
maybe just because like that was one of that was thing that was the first game with fans and mm-hmm. that was like that really got the juices going for us. We was like, like I was like just my angle. I was like, whoa, he be slam that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I think I I actually want to ask one more about Christian. Like he got I thought he got snubbed this week. Like you look at his numbers. Yeah, he, like, did. he did. He yeah, did. He did. I did. I mean, he shot like 80% from the field. It's so stupid. He missed four shots in two games. Like, what? Yeah. And then playing that's, against Wahab and JRE, like, that's not an easy – That's what I'm saying. No, not, those are not easy matchups for, for a guy like Christian. Like, yeah, yeah. How, how he much is like – How much is he – Yeah, I know. But, like, how much is having a five-man who basically is like a guard out there? Like, he can bring the ball up off rebounds and initiate offense. That's like no other yeah. five in the league, maybe in the country, can do that. Like, how much uh, yeah. more dynamic does it make you guys when he can just do everything he does from, like, the skill of a guard at that size and that position for you? Yeah, man, he's, he's versatile, and he's worked at it. Like, mm-hmm. I mean, just him being able to – th- one thing about him, I think he knows exactly what his advantages are when he's out there. Mm-hmm. And I think at, in the past he hasn't, like, Freshman year didn't he didn't know how to use he didn't he realized that he just figured he's a big and he had to play like a big and sophomore year he kind of got through that transition of you know I can use my advantage as a guard but be a big but it wasn't all the way there and now this year he's like like I'm faster than these dudes I'm quicker I can I'm 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 as smart I've been around for three years from so I'm, I'm smarter and I can j- I jump higher and I'm you know, I'm t- I'm still two hundred and twenty pounds, two hundred and fifteen pounds. So I'm still strong. And he can he's worked on his touch, worked on his his shot a lot. So he has I mean, he has confidence right now and that's everything. But one I think I know he knows his advantages. He knows that they're gonna he knows our ball screens, they're gonna I'm gonna come off and they're gonna try and maybe tra- probably trap or you know, we can call it Jim or just try and get it out of my hands quick so he he slips out quick. So he kinda knows like he will even come me during games like He's like, yo, I'm gonna slip this one. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm oh, I'm gonna rescreen it. So just, just get ready. So he kind of knows how to. He, he's smarter. So that, I think that's been a huge jump for him. And each game, I think he's realized that. And I'm, I'm real happy for him. Yeah, I think he really, he did deserve that player of the week this weekend. Mm-hmm. He did. You know, I wrote that on Twitter. After I quote tweeted your tweet, man. And, <laughs> yeah, I know. No, kind of made me mad. I'm like, dang, like, how, how did he? Well, I'm mean, just like, yeah, you look at it, like, wait a minute, why? Like, what? Uh, yeah, yeah. So well, I no, I, t- yeah. Matt, I said it even to you. I'm like, at halftime, I was like, at least, I'm like, CB finally getting the credit he deserves because, like, mm-hmm. they didn't even on Fox, they didn't even talk about him until, like, this was the first game they finally had a Christian Bishop. Like, look at what his stats were, his field goal yeah. percentage, like everything. And so I'm like, finally getting his credit. Yeah. And then I'm, I was thinking it was gonna be. Player of the year, so well because they, went, the they went into they went into Saturday. They were like, "Yeah, Jeremiah Robinson Earl is probably the player of the year in the league right now." And I'm like, "Yeah, that's probably true. He's been playing ridiculous." And then Christian just like he had his worst game of his career, and Christian yeah, was cool. awesome. So it's like, wait a minute. Yeah. But Christian was awesome. Yeah. The player of the year front runner that you just said was the best in the league had his worst game ever, ever. And what does that tell you? Like, who was the you know? Yeah, like who mm-hmm. should get the who should get the credit for that? Essentially, like if you're doing, nah, I agree. Doing that way, exactly, so. exactly. Yeah, yeah, but I just think I, I think it's I you know he, you, the way you talk about him and then you way the way you watch you guys like there's a lot of like thinking going on on the court that not a lot of teams do from you know one through five like Mitch the way he manipulates guys rescreening mm-hmm. <laughs> rescreening all the time constantly running cutting same with you I mean DJ just is on one hundred constantly every second mm-hmm. he's out there. Like, yep. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's pretty fun to watch. Well, hey, we appreciate your time though. Um, we'll let you get some downtime in for this week that you got. Let you kick back yeah, and relax. Enjoy your, enjoy your. Oh, we got break study hall, man. man. Yeah. We got study hall, man. Oh, Here we go back and study those Brady highlights in that study hall. Maybe go back and watch rewatch the Super Bowl. You about to go check in with Adam? You about to go take it with Adam? Yeah, he t- I think I had like, like three. I didn't even know. He texted me. He's like, you coming? So I was like, oh, I got to come at four, man. I got. Oh, tell him I said what's up, though. Tell him I said what's up when you I see will. him. All right. Well, thanks, Marcus. Right, Everybody, Thank thanks, for, uh, thanks for your questions, everybody. Thanks, Marcus, for hopping on. This has been Episode oh, yeah. 9, Scurry in the Scrub. Peace out. Signing off.